Hi everybody, I'm Brad with Big Family Homestead and today's video is actually very, very important. It's on the topic of water. But now before you go ahead and click away, I think it's important that you understand I'm not talking about how to gather and store fresh water. It's actually much more life-threatening than that. So here we go. All right, before I go any further, first of all, I wanna say a heartfelt thank you to all the people who've been subscribing and watching our videos. It truly is a blessing and it does help our family out. Uh, so thank you guys, really greatly appreciate it. If you don't mind, pass on the, uh, you know, the videos so that we can continue bringing you guys hopefully information that is, that is beneficial to you. And, and the second thing is this also, you know, I, 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 can, I can feel it. I can f feel it in my soul, people. The envy, I can feel the jealous juices flowing through the interweb net to me on the hat. And I know, I know you're, you're looking at my hat going, man, I wish I could have that hat. And the answer is no, no, you can't. My wife made it, so sorry. You can make your own, I guess. But anyway, okay, so today's topic is on water. So everybody knows the importance of keeping fresh, clean drinking water on hand at all times. Whether you're a, a homesteader, prepper, survivalist, farmer, everybody, all self-reliant people have to have a source of fresh water that you're not dependent on somebody else to get. That is extremely important. However, that is not the topic of water. Well, the uh, subtopic, if you will, <laughs> of water for today. No, 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 no. Here's the deal. I want to start this with a story. So bear with me and I'm going to tell you this little story and then I'm going to tell you why a lot of us are missing the boat on this. This is an actual very, very important topic that a lot of us are missing the boat on. Hopefully it's not you and you can watch the video and go, well, no, I got that. Or boy, I didn't think about that or I'm going to pass that on. So, but here it is. Here's my story and then we're going to get to the main meat and potatoes. All right, so my family and I moved into a new home about a year ago, not quite a year just yet. But this home was a new uh, experience for us in that we had never had actually a, a septic system on our property in any homes we've had before that ever had to have any maintenance. We had rented a place once, but it never had to have any maintenance. So we are new to the entire world of septic systems. So about a month ago, and we're talking, well, maybe, I think it might've been just shortly after, you know, Christmas. So, but right now we're heading into March, yada, yada. Anyway, I get dates bad anyway. But here's the thing. What happened was, you know, the light came on. There's a light out in the backyard saying, hey, your septic tank is full. So we went and called the place that had been servicing the uh, former owner here. And they came out and we thought, okay, well, you know, you just, they pump it out and, and everybody's happy. So they pumped it out, 2,200 pounds or gallons of liquipoo. Yummy, yummy. Anyway, so they pump that out and then they leave and we think everybody's hunky-dory, right? No, about four and a half, five days later, the light comes on again and we're like, uh-oh, we probably have a major problem on our hands. So we call them out and we're like, hey, this shouldn't have filled up this fast, right? And they're saying, yes, that's correct. It should not have. We think your pump is bad. So we're like, oh man, pump. We figure out a way to pay for the pump. They swap the pump out, pump it out again. Okay, now 2,200 gallons again, 4,400 gallons of liquid poo again. So now we got this new pump. They fixed it. Everybody's happy, right? No. About another four and a half to five days later, the light comes on again. And we basically find out the hard way that the company did not wire in the pump properly. They did a crappy installation, no pun intended. <laughs> anyway, so they finally come out and get it right again. They pump the thing out and they, they wire it up properly and uh, they finally get this thing done. Now keep in mind, we're talking two weeks, two weeks. So 2,200, 4,400, 60, hmm? 
lots of poo over the course of two weeks. And that brings me to my point. Poop water can kill you. Yeah. We all know the importance of keeping fresh water for us to consume, use, yada, yada, yippy, skippy, but nobody generally thinks about what you're gonna do with your poop water, your gray water, that funky water, when you're done with it. Here's the deal. The, our septic issue made us very, very aware of the fact that, well, wait a minute. Yeah, we had a problem with our pump and our septic system, but what happens if we didn't have electric power to deal with the poo coming from our house, say over the course of more than a week. Mmm, therein lies the rub, does it not? Yes. Well, here's the thing. I would challenge you, consider this. What happens if you do not have access to electric for more than a week? Yeah, you may have a solar powered backup or something like that, and we're working on that too. But here's the deal. What if you don't have power for more than two weeks? What are you gonna do with the poo? You know, here's the thing. If you guys remember from history, basically Valley Forge, George Washington, Revolutionary War, he had these guys, they were fresh, green troops, didn't know what's what. They didn't know how to deal with basic issues like how to deal with poop and water and all that stuff, and people were getting sick and dry, you know, dropping off like flies and dying because they just didn't know how to be a basic army. Policing and management of your gray water, your poop water, is going to be a matter of life and death. You, there are so many funky diseases that come from, you know, all this bacteria, E. coli, nasty, filthy water, poop water. And you need to know how to deal with that what happens if all of a sudden you don't have electric and you just don't flush the toilet and it just goes away now? Mm. What if, what if, heaven forbid, there was some major catastrophe and uh, let's say that the municipal power structure was down for even a month? Well, that means that the poop water pumps that even if you're on city water, county water, whatever, it's not going to be coming back. It's going to back up. That is the point of this video. And, and, and I'm not trying to give you your own solution because here's the thing, everybody's situation is completely different and that's why I can't just give you a solution. All I'm asking is think about this. What happens if you have to deal with your poop water? That's it, there it is, hallelujah. How do you deal with your poop water? Ladies and gentlemen, when I come to you and say, have you been healed? No, 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 sorry, separate topic. Anyway, the reality is this. If you're going to be a human being, you need to consume water. It goes in, comes out. What are you gonna do with it? You gotta make sure nobody's gonna get sick. Nobody's gonna die. Do you know how to do that? What happens if you literally have to deal with it bucket by bucket? Mm. Well, what are you gonna do with those buckets? Are you gonna clean them out? somebody to wash them. How are you gonna deal with that? You're gonna bury the poo? Where's it gonna go? Do not put it anywhere near a water source. Don't put it anywhere animals can get it to get, get at it. You know, that's it. That's the whole point of this video. I hope that you have a plan. If you do not, that's the point of this video. Figure out what your plan may be. What happens if you don't have power or all of a sudden city water, county water is not it's backing up into your house. We were faced with that reality for a different reason, but what happens if we didn't have power for a month? Anyway, I hope that this video was beneficial to you. And uh, if it was, please pass it on. I do greatly appreciate it. I am Brad with Big Family Homestead and you have an amazing day.